good to see you folks. It's, it's National Speed the Light Day. And uh, if some of you are not familiar with that, you will be by the time this service is over. And uh, in the Assemblies of God, we have a district. Uh, I, I mean, we sometimes, Darren, we assume everybody knows our organization, and they always, some, some don't. So we have our general council, which last Tuesday we, we elected and just uh, have a new superintendent, Doug Clay. Give God praise for Doug Clay and the new executive team. Several of them are new. And our Dr. Wood, who, uh, who served us for so many years, uh, is, is still in town, and he will be with us soon because we love him. Dr. Wood installed us here 16 years ago, just about 16 years ago, and he's a great friend. But at the general council, we elected new, ele- new elected officials. That's the general council on 1445 Boonville. But there is a district council in Springfield on Battlefield, and I don't know the address, if anybody does, you can shout it out. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But it's right there on the corner of Battlefield and Campbell. And, um, and there we have a superintendent of the district. We also have elected officials. And we have district leaders for youth and CE and men's. And Darren and Heather Poe are our youth uh, directors and men's directors. And they have been such friends of ours. You've heard them in the past. They may be new to some of you, but they're, they're friends of ours. And he's come today to share uh, the mission arm of youth, which is Speed the Light, and give Darren Poe a big hand as he comes. God bless you, Darren. We love you, buddy. It is always a privilege for Heather and I uh, to be at Oak Grove, to get to uh, be in town among friends. And uh, there are so many as we look out on the crowd that we know and that we love. Uh, We appreciate this church so, so much and what you do to support uh, the mission of God, whether that's in youth ministry or missions around the world, as you see some of these posters and things like that that are around. I am always glad when Heather can be with me. Uh, I do the youth. Heather handles the men's ministries at the uh, district office. And um, only I got it. They are kind of just they'll get there this morning, though. But so it's all right. It's all good. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning. That's pretty good. We're thrilled. We're thrilled to be with you today. It is National Speed the Light Day. And you've heard somebody say this before. Speed the Light provides for the essential transportation and the creative communication needs that our missionaries have. Not one car, truck, moped, burrow, camel, Sound system, video system is purchased for one of our Assemblies of God missionaries around the world that doesn't go through the program that we know of Speed the Light. I want to thank you for sending our missionaries. Many of you on a monthly basis, above your tithe and offering, give to the missions program so that we can send missionaries until all know. How many of you realize we're not done yet? We're not done yet. We're going to be talking a lot about that this morning. But as we send those missionaries, we handicap them if we don't give them the tools that they need. My friend Bruce McCarty used to say, uh, without Speed the Light, we're asking our missionaries to do in the 21st century like they would do in the 19th century. We want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel, but you're going to have to walk to get there. We want you to preach to hundreds, maybe thousands of people have to yell really loud because you're not going to have a sound system to preach on. (laughs) But how many of you are glad we live in the 21st century? (laughs) And so it's a good thing. So we equip our missionaries. Now, some of you say, Darren, you've been here before. You've talked about speed the light before. Why are you back? We've given you money for speed the light. And so I want to just give a quick report of what some of your money has done, because it's not just sitting in a bank account somewhere, (laughs) okay? So we've got a few uh, slides to show you. Number one, Convoy of Hope. How many of you know Convoy of Hope, every one of those truck and trailers? Yeah, incredible, incredible ministry. Every one of those, on the side of it, you'll notice a little circle behind the, the door says STL, because every one of those was purchased through Speed the Light. Every one of those was purchased through Speed the Light. In the recent hurricanes, over 500,000 people, 8 million pounds of supplies and food, over 100 cities, Convoy of Hope ministered to just in the recent hurricanes. 
None of that would have happened if it wasn't for people like you given to Speed the Light. Convoy needs our support, but they also need wheels. <laughs> they also need trucks and trailers. Overall, they've done 1,100 outreaches, Convoy of Hope does, has had since their uh, inaugural existence, since they've come into being. 1,100 outreaches. They say over 300,000 people have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ through those outreaches. That's, that's a great part of it right there. Over 121 different countries around the world. That is Convoy of Hope. That is Speed the Light. Now, more recently, we've got a picture of uh, when we took 75 people down to Nicaragua this summer. And you'll see some of the outreaches that took place. Um, 75 students. We went out every day, three different groups. We would pull up to a park or we would pull up to a street corner. <laughs> And we would get out the sound system that's in the bottom left-hand side. See a little, little uh, monitor sitting on the ground and speakers. We would turn that on. We would start music, and kids would just start coming from everywhere. <laughs> and we would tell stories, and we would, the, the funny white people would dance funny dances. And we would tell them about Jesus. And at the end, we would invite them into a circle. And at the end, we would say, how many of you prayed the prayer to ask Jesus into your heart today? And at the end of that week, you'll see 1,347 kids made decisions for Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? None of that would have happened if we wouldn't have got those three sound systems that just cost $1,200 each. That's a great investment in eternity in my book. And so those are the things that are happening with your Speed the Light monies. Well, I'm back because Speed the Light is not done purchasing essential transportation and creative communication equipment for our missionaries. And instead of me just getting up here the whole time and talking to you about it, I just got a, a missionary video saying thank you for Speed the Light and explaining the need a little bit more. So let's watch uh, the video from our missionaries, The Lands. Now that I've got your attention, let me tell you a little bit about the video you were seeing. The video you were seeing is of our actual city streets. That's right, our city streets. Can you imagine what the countryside looks like? That's why vehicles like this are so very important. This is the vehicle that we borrow and go to town for groceries at this point. This is a vehicle that you use to haul, well, stuff. This is a bigger vehicle that you use to haul, you know, bigger stuff. The problem that we have with these vehicles right now is they're not ours. But last night, literally last night, I got an email from Speed the Light saying Southern Missouri teenagers have raised enough money to buy us a Speed the Light vehicle. Woohoo! Thanks, Speed the Light. Way to go, some old teenagers. So today, today, I start shopping. What do we need a vehicle for? We need a vehicle to go to the people. We need to be able to carry equipment. We have to share the gospel of Jesus with the children of Cameroon. Southern Missouri youth, you rock. Thanks, Speed the Light. Thank you, Oak Grove, and thank you, Speed the Light. A radicalized young man stood in the city square next to a fountain. He had God's word in his hand, and he was ripping it up. He was tearing out the pages. He was screaming blasphemies against God, blasphemies against Jesus Christ. More people joined him talking bad about Christians, the Christian faith, the God that they served, the Christ that was their Savior, just screaming out a demonstration going on with dozens and dozens of people in the city square. At one point in time, he held up what was left of the Bible, and his arm stuck. He couldn't, he couldn't bring it down, and he got confused about that. Then he got worried about that, 
And then he ran away because he did not know what to do. A Christian was standing around that city square and noticed what happened. He followed that young man to his home, knocked on the door. The family inside was frantic. They were trying to pull his arm down. It would not come down. The young Christian man said, I know what's going on. I saw you in the city square, and if you'll let me pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ, he will heal you. The young man was desperate. Please pray for me. In the name of Jesus, release his arm. Oh, I forgot to say that during that, he also tried to drop the Bible, and the Bible was stuck in his hand too. He couldn't get rid of that. But not only was he healed, but a peace came into that home that the family had never experienced before. Many of you have experienced that peace. You know what we're talking about. And in that moment, one young man led another young man to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how it's happening in the Arab world today. And that's not the end of that story. Because the young man that was out in the city streets next to the fountain, screaming blasphemies against God, said to the other young man, I, I want to be baptized in the city square in that fountain. I want to publicly profess what God has done for me and what, how Jesus healed me. And so they went back to that city square, and there were still people all milling around. The young Christian man that God used to bring that other one to salvation and healing, the young man preached a simple message, and not only that young man gave their heart to the Lord and was baptized, but several others met him later to talk about faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ. That's what's happening in the Arab world around us. That's how it's happening. One person at a time, one encounter at a time, one supernatural miracle at a time. But how many of you realize one at a time is going to take a long time? One at a time is going to take a long time. There is a cause this morning, the mission of God. Today we're going to talk about the Live Dead Project in the Arab world. Because recently, Speed the Light took on many projects, one I'm going to present at the end of this morning. The Live Dead Arab world consists of 16 different countries. In recent years, inside those countries, there's been five revolutions, four civil wars. Many of us follow the news. Syria is perhaps the biggest humanitarian disaster in the history of the world. Half of the population is either displaced internally or externally. Libya, <laughs> Libya has 32 factions that claim to be speaking as the head of the government. <laughs> 32. We thought we had it bad. <laughs> there are three recognized governments in Libya, and the UN recognized government doesn't have a building as headquarters, but they're in a ship in the port of Tripoli because they're not allowed to come on land. The Arab world is just in chaos. They're in disorder. What an opportunity we have as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to make a difference in that world. Dysfunctionality everywhere. Volatility and in that same context, as these things are going on, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going forward. And your prayers are being answered because the missionary units, just in the last few years, have gone from the number 39 to over 150 missionary units that God is calling into that Arab world to make a difference one person at a time. Over 150 today are trying to infiltrate the darkness with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that all may know him. And they're not done. We're not done, church, until all, until all know. Until all know. The Lord of the harvest is sending laborers into the harvest field. At the same time, that's causing many to put themselves into harm's way, which we'll talk about again in just, just a little bit. There are 7,000 unreached people groups in the world. 7,000 unreached people groups. A specific language in a specific geographical location 
in specific communities. 7,000 unreached people groups, over 3 billion people, 42% of the population in our world is considered un, unreached. Well, way I've said that many, many times, but I recently heard a missionary put it this way. The difference between being lost, like here in the United States, versus maybe being unreached in Syria. He says, it's like you and, uh, and your family on the weekend, let's say yesterday, because yesterday was a beautiful day, decided you needed a break. And so you and your wife are just going to head down to the community pool just to get away for a little bit. You've got a little two-year-old that's following you along. You get there and the pool's packed because there are lots of people around enjoying a hot day and they just needed a break too. And so everybody's around and all of a sudden you lose sight of your two-year-old. You get into a conversation with a neighbor and, and that two-year-old wanders off into the, 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 the sidewalk by the deep end and falls in. The likelihood of that two-year-old being saved is pretty good. Because most of us have been taught to swim. The pool was surrounded by people that knew how to swim. Somebody saw it, heard it. There's perhaps even a lifeguard around keeping track of everybody, making sure that everything's okay. The likelihood of that little two-year-old being saved is pretty good. Now let's put a two-year-old in Aleppo, Syria. And you see, that two-year-old's know nothing but bombs going off in their city every day for two years of their existence. His parents want to get a break too, but they're not looking for a vacation or even a few minutes at the pool. They're looking to stay alive. They're looking for hope for their child's future. So they decide to sell everything they have and buy tickets for a human smuggler who will put them on a little dinghy that was designed to hold 20 people, but he'll put 40 people on it. They'll leave from the port city of Tardis on the Mediterranean Sea on the coast of Syria with the understanding that if they can just get over to one of the Greek islands, they'll be able to get asylum, they'll be able to get into a refugee camp. That's hope for them. But because what they're doing is illegal and what the smuggler is doing is illegal, they only go out at night. And the best nights are the nights when the moon's not shining and the best night is when there's a storm going on because the normal people that patrol the shore area, they won't be out that night because of the storm. The family gets on the boat, mother, father, two-year-old. They get on the boat with 37 other people and they head out into the Mediterranean Sea and they hit a big wave because of the storm and that two-year-old falls over the side of that boat. Unlike you and I, they all weren't taught how to swim. They lived in a desert. They never learned. Nobody on the boat knows how to swim. It's dark. It's stormy. The waves are big. What are the chances of that two-year-old surviving? The difference between the lost here in the United States, because there are lost here in the United States, there are lost in this city. There are lost in your neighborhood. There are lost next door to where you live. But we rely on someone that knows the message, that knows how to swim, taking that message of salvation to them. The likelihood is better of that than there is among an unreached people group in the Arab world. Now you have the idea of the task that we're up against. The difference between being lost and unreached. Both are drowning, but the one where there are people near that should save them and the other one doesn't have a chance. That's the missionary task. That's what we're asking our missionaries to do when they go. And I believe that's the heart and soul of not just the missionary task, but the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the heart of the God that we serve, the heart that we call Father, the heart that is never going to let us go. There are church planting efforts going on that need to go on in 7,000 people groups where Jesus has not yet been proclaimed. There are not enough believers, not enough resources to evangelize that people group. That equals 
unreached. Unreached. No community of believers. Inside the unreached people groups, there are those called unengaged. Unengaged means there is no missionary, there is no Christian, there is no effort going on to even reach that people group. There's nobody that, there's no believers that we know of. And so the two examples that I have for you today is the unreached people group are the Kurds. The Kurds are in the northern part of Iraq. They're actually spread out among 10 different countries. After World War I, the Kurds were supposed to have their own country, but in order to appease the Turkish Empire that was growing and different things that were going on, they were left out. And it's the largest people group, 35 and a half million people, the largest people group in the world without its own country. That is the Kurds in the Arab world, and they are less than 0.01% Christians. Hard to imagine. Hard to imagine. That's an unreached people group. So you have to infiltrate the Arab world and learn that language, and then you have to infiltrate the Kurdish people and learn the Kurdish language in order to reach those people. So two languages so far. Let's go one more into an unengaged people group called the Yazidi people. They're an unengaged group. And they're in the middle of the Kurdish people. They're spread out a little bit as well. 700,000 of them in 10 different countries. And again, less than one-tenth of 1% Christians. So you have to infiltrate the Arab world with the language, then the Kurdish people with the language, then the Yazidi people with their language. That's three different languages, and I'm too old <laughs> to learn three different languages. I, I, I don't know if I could do that, but there are some young people here that today at the end when I ask us to, to give in an offering as we receive an offering for Speed the Light, there are some of you that need to pray about, will I be the one, God, will you call me to go to that place to learn those languages, to be your light in that dark place because we need to continue to pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into the harvest field. The need is great. The need is great. And you see, inside the Kurdish people, the Yazidis are despised as a people group among their own people because they're devil worshipers. They worship an angel of the light. They bow down, they pray in the direction of the sun. How many of you realize we have a light to show them? The true light. The true light. We have the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus declared himself to be the light of the world, and he needs to be declared to those people. So why, why be the light? Why missionaries? Why the mission? God has been dealing with me about one verse of Scripture that we don't always quote. John 3.16 is right before it. But John 3.17 says this, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would take this message and this need Touch our hearts to the point where we engage in the process this morning of missions to where we pray for the lost. We give so that our missionaries can reach the lost. And we even pray to go to the lost, maybe around the world, but maybe next door. Challenge our hearts with this idea of the lost this morning. People that need to be in relationship with you or they are lost. And God will be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world. How many of you realize that our society today is pretty good at judging others? We have this little thing called social media that even helps us do that more effectively. We judge what people say, we judge the pictures that they take, the posts that they post what people wear, what kind of language they speak, how they look, what they all kinds of things. We judge other people. But God did not send his son in the world to judge the world, but that the world through him would be saved. 
Matthew 7, 1, do not judge others and you will not be judged for you'll be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. So we are not to judge, but how many of you realize judgment is coming? Judgment is coming. That's why Speed the Light. That's why missions. That's why missionaries. Judgment is coming because Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of that glory of God. 6.23 of Romans, the wages of sin is death. There's going to be a judgment coming. Not by you, not by me, but God is going to judge The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Revelations chapter 20 is clear about the judgment. If your name's not written in the book of life, you'll be thrown into the lake of fire. We have a job to do, church. There is a mission, there is a cause. Until all know the name of Jesus Christ, until they declare Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, until they accept the love of a father that sent his only son, we've got work to do until all know. And we can make a difference right here from Oak Grove Assembly of God this morning in the Arab world. Because Romans 10, 14, a verse you're all familiar with, how can they call on him, Jesus, to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? The great co-mission. We have a part in it. Matthew 28, 19. Go into all Northern America. Go into all Northern America and preach the gospel. Uh, oh, Southern America, South America too. We'll take that. Maybe a little bit of Asia. But we're not going to worry about this kind of air. We're not going to worry about India or maybe that northern part of Africa. No, it says go into all the world. And this morning, 42% are unaffected, unimpacted by this gospel, by this good news, by this eternal life. Because whoever believes in him will not perish. Face that lake of fire, eternal judgment, but they'll have everlasting life. God sent his only son, and because God sent, we send our missionaries, and Speed the Light equips those missionaries that are sent. Speed the Light. Yesterday was a day that many churches and districts pushed something called one in a thousand. The idea started at a local church with a young man that tried to raise $10,000 in one day by hitting 1,000 golf balls. He was going to get people to sponsor him, and he's going to hit 1,000 golf balls and get people to sponsor him. And then, then his youth group started doing the same thing, and they all tried to raise $1,000. And so it started that way. But Ty Smith's goal has been and will continue to be the day before National Speed the Light Day, so yesterday, the Saturday before this Sunday, that's National Speed the Light Day, his goal is to challenge students, will they be one in a thousand? His goal is to get 1,000 students to say, I'll raise $1,000 on this day. I'll raise $1,000. And if 1,000 students raise $1,000, that's a million dollars. And so wouldn't it be great to say, we raised a million dollars on one day? So I know that churches... And, and students across the United States were challenged with that thought this year. I talked to a youth pastor this week that challenged his students, and here are some of the things they did. Don't judge. I just read that scripture, right? Don't judge. There was a th one student did a thousand knife throws into, into wood. One student blew up a thousand balloons. They come in handy at an outreach. Kids outreach or something like that. One student ran 1,000 meters. Another student kicked 1,000 footballs. Another student baked 1,000 cookies. And they were all gone after the Sunday morning service. Imagine that, church people liking cookies. 
Another student did a 1,000 free throws. Another one did a 1,000 layups. Another one did a 1,000 soccer shots on goal. Another one shot a 1,000 arrows. Another one did a 1,000 bottle flips. Another one stacked a 1,000 cups. But they all did something for Speed the Light, not for themselves, not for themselves, but for others. That's one of the most valuable tools that Speed the Light is to this generation of students that many times has things handed to them without knowing the value or the effort or the work that's put behind it. One day that they can focus, Speed the Light, a program where students are others-minded and not I-minded. And students across the United States took yesterday to do one in a thousand and raise hundreds and thousands of dollars. And yes, once again, there are some Southern Missouri youth pastors that did the Missouri Tough Mudder race yesterday. Now, I'm standing before you, and I'm walking around. Therefore, you know I did not do it. <laughs> Last week, it was a week between the Tough Mudder and this Sunday that I was with you, and I left the cane right there. It was the first time I hadn't used a cane in a week because my knee was hurting so bad. But so I didn't participate yesterday because I'm old. Er, older, because I'm older. And they say that wisdom comes with age. I'm still praying for that. But, uh, but you know what? There were, what do we count? Seven? Seven youth ministries yesterday. Um, one youth pastor and his wife did it together. Um, several youth pastors. One youth pastor had five students with him that did it. And yesterday they did 11 miles and 22 obstacles in just a little under four hours. And they, they put themselves through that as a rallying point to get people to sponsor them for Speed the Light money to buy equipment for a missionary that is going into all the world, including the 42% of the world that's not reached today. Well, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. What are we going to do today? We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity today to impact the Arab world from Oak Grove Assembly of God. And so I want you to pray about what you can do to help with this need. Many of the times in the Arab world, they focus on one city. And in that one city, they'll open at least one conversation club. It's a retail space in a busy area. They'll go in, they'll set up computers, they'll go in with people, and they'll encourage the Arabs to come into that conversation club to practice their English. But on all the devices, on all the Kindles, on all the computers, is the Word of God. <laughs> and they'll practice their English by reading and having conversation about God's Word. Well, each church planting and training team that goes into one of these cities needs a $12,500 kit, which includes two computers, the hardware for managing the program, tablets loaded with discipleship materials, routers, communication equipment, um, Hope Box routers, the software to run the follow-up system with people, and five secure phones that are not traceable. And I didn't ask about that. I think that was self-explanatory. So each one of these conversation clubs cost $12,500 to, to have put in a city and among these 42% of the world that has a less than one-tenth of a 1% one chance of hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we can make a difference from Oak Grove Assembly of God. So in closing, I want you to Ask God, God, what would you have me do to make a difference in the Arab world today through giving to Speed the Light? And I want you to hear from one more of our missionaries. Dick Brogdon is leading the charge in the Arab world. And as you watch this video from him, please pray about what God would have you do to be a part of the answer in sending the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ into a dark place. And after the video, Pastor Ron will come and receive the offering this morning.
Hello, Speed the Light family in the National Youth Department. I want to thank you so much for taking on a project in the air world. A million babies were born in this country this year. That's a million Muslim babies. What chance do they have of heaven? What chance do they have of eternal life? We're pushing now to 400 million Muslims in the Arab world, in over 400 people groups. And those people groups are unreached. They don't have a Christian church that has the strength and the capacity to impact society or to reach their own indigenous people. Would you pray with us about the Arab world? It's the epicenter, if you will, of Islam and therefore geopolitics in the world today. What happens in Saudi, in Syria, in Egypt affects economies, it affects politics, it affects even history. It's here that Jesus came. It's here that Jesus will come back in glory and power. And if we really are going to see the gospel go into all the world amongst every people, we're going to have to see seismic breakthrough in the Arab world where it's difficult, where it's dangerous, where there's death. And would you help us bring resurrection life to a place that is just inundated with lostness? Thanks for the light. Love you guys. Ushers, if you would, please. There's Speed the Light envelopes that they're going to be handing to you. Thank you, Darren and Heather, for what, 20, how many years now? You've been 21, 22, 21? 21 years serving as our Southern Missouri District uh, Youth Directors. 21 years. The first part of the verse, John 3 and 16, I just want to ask you a question. I asked my Sunday school class this morning. What if God only loved? What if God only loved? We, we often say we love. You know, we throw that word around. America's idea and identity of love is... It's pretty shallow, obviously, when it comes to keeping commitments of marriage and keeping commitments of longevity. Love is, is, uh, is not an easy thing. You can say you love, but when you say you love, in America, we have just a romantic idea of love. Like, like I love pizza. I love pizza. Yeah, really? Yeah, I love dogs. I love puppies. I love, I love stuff. I love my iPhone. I love my church. Really. What if God only loved? See, the rest of the verse is, God so loved, God so loved, He gave. He gave. So giving is, is the proof of loving. So nobody's here to bring a trip on you today. We just finished Faith Promise. Oak Grove pledged over $70,000, and Oak Grove gives more than they pledge. It's a unique group. Usually churches pledge and give less than they pledge, but Oak Grove pledges less and gives more. How many are glad for that? I hope you stay the way you are. I don't want you to change. Well, we can always be better, but I'm saying, you never, you never can say you love people you don't serve. And the way we serve the world or love the world is by giving. We give our missionaries. We give in our very own. We have missionaries coming out of our church, going into the harvest. We're giving our very own. We're giving our sons and daughters. We're giving our grandchildren. We're giving, we're giving our prayers. We give our prayers. We give our finances. So every one of you must have already gotten an envelope today. This, what you put in that envelope. Whether you write a check today or you write something on that envelope that says, I'm going to do this monthly or whatever it is you, you want to do, this entire offering goes to Speed the Light. And, uh, and tonight we will let you know how much it is. We'll let you know how much it is. We have purchased a lot of things. We purchased motorbikes. We purchased bicycles. We purchased canoes. We've even purchased yaks. Yeah, yeah. Yak and Jill. Two yaks. Yak and Jill, we, we certainly have. It's true, it's true. 
And so many of you are, 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 are so faithful. Our young people, our young people have worked hard this year as well. And, uh, and I tried to explain some of you who are new to Oak Grove. BGMC is what our kids can do. Speed the Light is what our youth can do. Life of the Lost is what our men can do. The treasure chest and all that the ladies do. There's something all of us can do. But uh, Dick Brogdon is speaking to you prophetically, saying that whatever we do and take part in this, in this offering is going to change the world. It's going to change the world because that's where it's happening. How many know it's all culminating in a strip of land called Israel? I said, it's all going to settle. And, and I wonder why. Just a little bitty old slither of land. Why is the whole world fighting over the little peninsula of land? Little, not, it's not around water, I don't guess. It's the Red Sea. A strip of land. Because, because everything's going to culminate there. It all started there and it's all going to end there. And so if I were the devil, I would bring as much confusion to that land as I could. But I'm not the devil. And if I were the devil, I would attack a great city in America called Springfield. Because from Springfield, every day, go 3,000 missionaries to over 300 countries. Every day. And hundreds and thousands and tons of literature go out of this place. The missionaries. So I'm thankful that you're a part of the Assemblies of God. I'm glad you're part of Oak Grove. And whatever we do together, it's going to make a difference. But I want us to do it together. So I don't know if the Lord has already spoken to you, but would you stand with me tonight?